All right. What's good, family? It's your man, Deshaun Wolf Williams, here with another episode of the Black Vest Money Podcast. Um, of course, before we get started, I want to send a special shout out to our sponsors, uh, Wolf's Main Beard Care. As you know, we are still the lifestyle. So be sure to go and check out the website at wolfsmainbeardcare.com. Uh, yeah, y'all, we, we got a special, special guest um, here today that, that I think, you know, this conversation is going to be beyond dope. It's going to be beyond informative. Um, and, and I'm excited and expecting some jewels to be dropped for you all. Um, you know, let, I'm going to read my note, read from my notes, you know, because I want to make sure I, I, you know, give this just due because it's, it's well deserved. Right. Um, but this man, he, he, he was the, the content creator, one of the original content creators before it was cool. Right. Um, uh, this man in my eyes, he, he is the official credit king. Um, he's the author of the full time CEO the author of the book, Credit is King. He's the founder of We Management. His company has single-handedly helped over 1,500 small to medium-sized businesses get access to over $300 million in funding. I repeat, over $300 million in funding over a two-year period, right? He's a FICO certified counselor. Um, he's a TED Talk speaker. Uh, let's be clear. Like I said before, he, he is, in my eyes, the original credit king. Um, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Mr. Will Roundtree. How are you good, sir? Oh, man, I appreciate that. Thank you for the intro, man. It's, yeah. uh, it's, it's definitely humbling. You know, we we often, you know, as, uh, you know, influencers or creators or whatever, you know, tagline we put on ourselves, we're so just in our bubble yeah. that, you know, yeah. sometimes when you hear people you know, edify you, it's almost like, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's touching because, you know, we, we live in a world where you, we don't get that often. So Absolutely. I appreciate that. Thank you. No doubt, man. No doubt. You know, for, before we get in, before we get started, you know, for those who may not know who you are, do you mind kind of just explaining who Will Roundtree is and where he, where he got started? Definitely. So uh, Will Roundtree, originally from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, uh, currently live in Las Vegas, Nevada, going on my 17th year. And wow. so uh, just like everyone else, I was told, go to school, get good grades, get jobs and all that stuff. Uh, found out that that route didn't work for me. <laughs> so I started, you know, working in a workforce, uh, was working at a company, thought I was going to retire from there. was there about eight years. One day got a letter that the company had been sold. The next day it shut down. And wow. so from that point, I didn't know what I was going to do with my life. And so but I was fortunate enough to be introduced to entrepreneurship through uh, network marketing. So I got started in network marketing, didn't make any money. I had hit all of the ranks, but the one thing that it did teach me was uh, personal development. And I often say that the personal development was probably worth way more than the money because money comes and goes, but the yeah. personal development is what kept me going and why I was able to sustain so many of my uh, of life obstacles. Mm -hmm. And so this was around 2005. I uh, was looking to make a transition in my life. And I remember right before I made this transition, a mentor of mine said, well, eventually credit will become the new dollar. Didn't know what he meant by that. And then finally, 2005, I moved to Las Vegas uh, with a dollar in a dream. <laughs> and when I say a dollar in a dream, it literally was just a few dollars in a dream. Yeah. So I moved to Las Vegas, found out entrepreneurship wasn't as easy as I thought it was, actually ended up becoming homeless. But then I remember that, 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 that saying, eventually credit will become the new dollar. So yeah. started learning about credit, took me about two and a half years to actually work and repair my own credit, um, was able to see the benefits of why having good credit is so powerful. And so I wanted to really just take it upon myself just to share this information. I didn't yeah. do it for a monetary gain. I didn't even do it as a business. I literally was just going to apartment complexes doing free credit workshops because I wanted to teach them about home ownership. Sure. And so uh, just from there, man, just stay persistent, consistent and diligent and fast forward. I mean, now we're here. And so it's definitely wow. been a long journey, man. Wow. No, that, that's awesome, man. You know, like I said, you know, when I, when I first started watching the videos and to hear you say the apartment complexes and stuff like that, it makes sense. Cause I'm like, I'm looking back, I'm like, man, I don't know if he was in the clubhouse, you know what I'm saying or what, but, 
I remember that white, you know, saying the white board, man. And, and, you know, you had did a um, thing you were teaching on um, um, maybe credit uh, utilization at the time. Um, and that was, you know, that one particular video that I'm referring to, again, man, that helped kind of turn things around just as far as I was concerned, you know, from a credit standpoint, because, you know, you know how it is. We, we grow up more often than not. We don't have the, the, you know, the necessary tools and or information or access, you know what I'm saying, to the information that's needed, you know, a lot of times, you know, in order for us to get from point A to point B, right? You know, I, I tell this story often. Um, I was being interviewed to be become um, a bank manager, you know, for one of the banks that I worked for a while back. Um, you know, they had interviewed me, fell in love with me, man, and, and pretty much offered me the job on the spot, you know, at that time. So, you know, here we are, they, they had, you know, told me, yeah, we'll be in touch with you, this, that, and the third. The president of the bank, bro, called me the next day, right? He was like, hey, Deshaun, um, can you stop by the office? You know, I want to, you know, just have a conversation with you, you know, about, you know, about a couple of things. Um, it won't take long. He said, just let me know, you know, let me know what you think. I said, all right, cool. Well, I went to the, to, <laughs> to the bank, you know, and met him in the conference room, right? kid you not bro it was like something off the sopranos man the lights was dim you know so we in this big old boardroom and i walk in it's me him dude had my credit report on the table all he said to me he said man this isn't the guy that we fell in love with can you explain to me what happened here wow you know and it was one of those things where you know my wife and i we had i made a significant amount of money early on i lost that job like yourself, you know, lost that job. My expenses stayed up there, though. You know what I'm saying? We blew through credit. We blew. I mean, we just we tanked, you know, and I had to tell them straight up, like, look, this is what happened. You know, and part of me coming to, you know, your company is a part of my, my rebound, part of my bounce back story. Right. Long story short, they ended up still offering me the job, but he gave me pretty much six months to get it together. You oh, know wow. what I'm saying? And your videos, you know, your, your, you know, your content played a good role in that, man. So I, again, I definitely want to salute you, you know, and that's why I say, man, this is an honor, you know, to be able to talk to you and have you talk to, you know, my audience, you know what I'm saying? And, and help grow that too. So man, salute to you, bro. Really salute hey, to you. Hey, that's a, that's a dope story, man. But it's interesting of you sharing that story because I've been telling people for so long, our credit score can dictate us, can dictate your employment status. Absolutely. Absolutely. And people, people, because we've been so conditioned to think of credit just from a consumer standpoint, yeah. I've literally had people who couldn't get a job or a security clearance in the government or work at a bank or even sell uh, life insurance. I have clients who have passed the bar and can't practice law because their yeah. credit is not in position. It's yeah. bigger than just buying a house and a car. Absolutely. And it's one of those things where, you know, the difference between the consumer mindset, in my opinion, that's what keeps us, you know, that's what keeps us limited, you know, in our reach and everything too. Just even from a job perspective, man, you know, I said earlier, you know, I, I, I genuinely live by the motto of, man, you, you miss every shot you don't take, you know what I'm saying? And we often put ourselves in a box because of what we think our credit is and, and you know, our lack of wanting to, to do what's necessary to get us to that next level, you know what I mean? So, with that, like, what do you think is the most important thing as far as like just mindset shift as a whole, you know, for, for people? Well, I think the, the most important thing is really just starting there and understanding that credit is really just a tool mm. because you know, we've been so conditioned to think that credit is negative because we associate credit with debt, mm -hmm. but not knowing mm -hmm. that the wealthy people have, have, have unlocked the cheat code and understanding that there's different types of debt. See, wealthy people or people who are smart with money understand, hey, this credit or this debt can help me to purchase income producing assets that yeah. will make money versus us. We've been taught, hey, credit is bad. Yeah. Credit is this. Uh, stay away from credit cards. Or yeah. because, again, like we said, we've been used to looking at it from a consumer standpoint. So then we have a whole mindset of thinking that something is negative. When there's millions upon millions of documentation that show the benefit of it. And so sure. once we understand the, 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 
the, the, the mindset and having a philosophy change of how credit can be beneficial, then sure. there's a whole nother level of understanding how to leverage your credit. Because this is what I tell people. I've built my entire business over the past 10 years leveraging credit. I've never had to use any of my own money. And once you really understand that concept, then it becomes a lifestyle change. Sure. So not only do you change your mindset, then you change your lifestyle and really understand that credit is merely just a tool, no different than a carpenter who uses a hammer. Absolutely. You know, I, I do want to um, kind of get your thoughts, right? Um, because as I said, you are you are definitely one of the the originals, you know, in in this whole content thing regarding the the teaching of, of you know credit and and financial literacy, essentially, right? You know, how do you feel, man? Seeing because it, it seemed like there's a new credit repair company, there's a new business. Everybody, you know, what I'm saying the pandemic, bro. I ain't never seen so many gurus in my life. You know what I mean, like. To the point where I, I'll be honest with you, we're like, bro, I contemplated because, you know, Black Vest, we're, it's a financial literacy company, right? You know, we have been teaching just financial literacy, you know, for like the bank that I work for, um, you know, they would allow for us to do coaching, you know, coaching things of that nature, whatever. So, you know, again, I say before the before the pandemic, you know, boom, right? How do you feel, man? Because at the end of the day, there's a lot of companies that that gives it a bad name. You know what I mean? Um how do you navigate, you know, through that and, and just staying and remaining who you are, you know what I mean? And ensuring that people recognize there's a difference between a real, a real round tree and such and such other company, just because they're getting, you know what I mean, on different shows and things yeah. like that. How do you, you know, decide, like, how do you keep that? that, that yeah, no, absolutely. That's actually a great question. And so I can take it all the way back to sound like credit repair has kind of had like a cloud over it. 10 years ago. Yeah. I can when I first got into the space, I used to whisper to people and say, hey, I get yeah. credit for there. <laughs> yeah. It was almost embarrassing because yeah. it was almost looked at as, as like a scam. You know right. what I'm saying? But this is what I told myself back then. And then I'll bring it back around how I keep the separation. And then I'll tell you how, how I feel about everybody, literally anybody just jumping into the space. I said, you know what? My focus is going to be to educate people. And here is mm -hmm. why. 60% of people who go and get their credit repair usually end up back in the same position because they haven't changed their habits. Yeah. It's no different than it's no amount of money you can give someone who has poor financial habits. That's this fact. is why lottery winners end up broke. This is That's why fact. athletes end up broke because their habits haven't changed. So I say, you know what? I'm going to teach people in, about credit education. It's bigger than just disputing some things. Do you un, understand credit utilization? Do you understand yeah. how inquiries impact you? Do you understand statement dates and, 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 and uh, uh, bill due dates and all of yeah. these different variances? And then giving people the information on, now let's be aware of, hey, you got to monitor your credit often. Okay, now that your credit is in a position, certain position, now let me show you how to uh, educate your children and help build their credit. And yeah. so my focus had always been education. So fast forward, um, and I'll talk a little bit about pre-pandemic. I remember as the pandemic was looming, I wanted to still be able to reach the masses because I've been so used to traveling and going to different cities, doing different events and educating. So I actually put out a 30-day do-it-yourself credit repair program, yeah. a very yeah. interactive, virtual. I did shot over 40-something, almost 40 videos and literally walked people from A to Z on understanding credit, but then also how to repair it themselves. Because yeah. when you're stuck at home, you want to keep yourself occupied. And so the course did so well. I think we sold maybe about 1,500 of those subscriptions in a matter of like less than a month. Wow. And probably a good, at least that I could, that I know of, a good 10% of them at least have started credit repair companies. And wow. so- the, the good and the bad of that is, is one, this is a space that has an easy entry point and I'm, I'm all for it because it gives people an opportunity to actually make some money. Sure. Because, you know, we're going through a scenario now where, you know, people are still hurting financially and it gives them yeah. an entry point to be able to do so. Now, the, the drawback to that is, is that there's so much unethical stuff that takes yeah. place in this industry and it does give 
you know, the, the individuals in this space who, who actually uh, do their best to, to abide by the rules, because there's a lot of, uh, 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 you know, restrictions that can take place depending on the state you live in. I mean, there's yeah. a lot of different things. And so yeah. it can give some of us a bad name. What yeah. I do and how I, what I, I, what I do for my company and for us to kind of separate ourselves is one, just continue to do what we've been doing. We don't hop on the latest and greatest trends. We don't uh, uh, jump into the new latest uh, credit hacks. We don't, we, we, we don't participate in any of that. And again, our focus is still the education component. So yeah. another prime example, most people, and in in, in a lot of times when people come and try to speak with us and they're shopping around, they always come back and say, well, the one thing that does separate you guys is that even when I speak to your advisors, they're educating me. Yeah. It's not just a sales call. So Man. that's one of the biggest differentiators that we focus on. We also have a monthly call every single month. So every month we allow all of our credit repair clients to get on a call and speak to our team and one of our credit specialists to be able to ask any questions about credit, how to improve it, how to uh, leverage it. So it's still, the focus is still the education. The yeah. actual repair is just a byproduct. But then not only that, Deshaun, we're going to encourage you, hey, you can do this yourself. We yeah. still have our 30 day credit repair channels. We still have eBooks. We just, we can give you the content, you know? And I've had so many people like yourself that's watch my lives, watch my videos, watch my YouTube, got my book, my eBook, and have been able to not only just start a credit repair company, but like yourself, have even just started a financial literacy program yeah. for their community. And so, so yeah, so I definitely love how, what I've been able to do has birthed kind of like this new age because sure. you didn't see a lot of people that you didn't see a lot of black people in this space ten at all. Years. At so all, I do love that fact that that has been birthed. But uh, uh, the but again, there's going to be good and bad, and no matter what you do, no different sure. than the crypto space in a, a car rental space. I mean, and so you just got to. You just got to do what has been working for you. And I don't try to hop on fads and bandwagons and the new latest and greatest hacks. Yeah. I just focus on at doing what I know I'm good at. And that's education. Yeah. And, and I think that it's um, it's very evident. You know what I mean? It's very clear because, you know, again, man, I, I do. I, I sometimes I just sit back and laugh, you know, uh, everybody again, everybody's a guru. And like you said, not to take anything from anyone, you know, right. by all means, get your money, do what you're going to do, feed your family, right? You know, but when it comes at the price of other people's livelihoods, you know, other people's well-being, that's where, that's where the issue comes in, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, that, that's something with, you know, with our company, just as far as the financial literacy portion of it, you know, we have a, a monthly segment, you know, on, uh, on our regional news channel, you know, here, where, you know, we're just giving just free game, you know what I mean? Uh, the, the podcast and things like that, you know, we're, we're genuinely, you know, we're giving free game, you know, and that, that's the thing I, I feel like you do the right thing, do enough of the right thing, everything else going to come, you know what I mean? The, the money and all that stuff will eventually come. You know, we got, you know, we got offers and things of that nature, you know, for individuals that want a more one-to-one, -one, you know, personal interaction, then yeah, of course you, you pay and we, we make it happen, you know what I mean? But Man, the education, bro, you know, and, and the willingness to, to genuinely help people because you want to and because you've been in their shoes compared to, you know, you know, it's a quick buck. You know what I'm saying? People can read through that, man. You know, people can read through that for sure. So, um, yeah, I, I wanted to ask you something, too, man. I, so I think I've seen either seen the interview or, or, or heard an interview, um, you know, where you were talking about, you know, your grandfather being a farmer. Uh, you know, and, and, you know, I, I wanted to ask, how do you feel, you know, just that upbringing, you know, affected you into to how you became the man you are, you know, from an entrepreneur and business standpoint? Man, you did your homework. You found me. Man, I, I, I wasn't playing, bro. I, I wasn't playing. The respect is real. The respect is Definitely, real. I appreciate that. So yeah. I always say I didn't realize how fortunate I was until I became an adult. And what okay. I mean by that is that uh, I've had uh, strong men around me who, who were entrepreneurs. And I didn't know that at the time. Like my dad was an entrepreneur. Yeah. Uh, both my grandfathers were, uh, my grandfather in Milwaukee, he at one point owned over 45 houses and two car washes and he oh, didn't wow. even have 
he didn't have passed the fifth grade education. Wow. You know, my grandfather, who I lived uh, in the South with for a period of time, and we, we lived on over 120 acres of land and there were three houses, my grandparents, my uncles and my aunts. And they pretty much ate what they killed. They grew yep. their own crops. And so spending time living with my grandfather, and my, well, both my grandparents, but I was so close to my grandfather, it really instilled a different work ethic into me because, you know, as, as crazy as it sounds, like he didn't even have to ask me to do anything. I genuinely always wanted to stay busy. And I've always been like that even as a child. And so, uh, so yeah, so I didn't have a problem, you know, uh, uh, chopping up wood because we didn't have a central heat. We had a fireplace in the house. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't mind cropping the garden, chopping down trees, uh, helping him put shingles on roofs and different things like that. And I still had to go to school every day. So there would be days I had to be at school by seven. I'm up at 430 chopping wood. You know, yeah. there'd be days when I get out of school and it's 105 degrees in Mississippi humidity and I'm on top yeah. of a roof putting on shingles while everybody yeah. else is at, at the football games, while everybody yeah. else is at the school dances, while everybody else is just kicking back and hanging out. And so it was easy for that to translate to adulthood to have that work ethic because all I knew was work mm -hmm. and not from a, a bad, uh, from a standpoint of like, Hey, you have to work, but from a standpoint of like, I enjoy the result that comes from putting in hard work. Yeah. yeah. Meaning like, Hey, if I want to make a thousand dollars, I go do X, Y, and Z. The result of that hard work is making a thousand dollars. If yeah. I want to lose weight and I want my body to look a certain way, I have to put in work to see that result. So I think my hard work comes from, you know, of course, my upbringing, but then I get addicted to the result. And yeah, that's, that's why good. I never mind putting in the work because that, because people, pe now it makes it easier for people to be able to say, I can do that. Yep. I, mean, I don't have to be a magician and I don't have to know all of these fancy words. I just got to work hard yep. and be persistent and not give up. And, I, and and that's really my entire message. I'm like, I'm I'm no different than anyone else. I often tell people, Deshaun, I can't spell. I mispronounce words all, yep. <laughs> all the time. Yep. Yep. But, but, but then I also tell them, would you rather say I am smart or I is a millionaire? Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> and so so all you got to do is, so, so the, the, the work ethic is the byproduct of the end result that we want. And it translates to every area of our life. And if people just knew that one, just that one thing, that yeah. it really is just the, persist, the, the persistency of being consistent. And that's yeah. why I work so hard. Good. Because I enjoy the results, man. Yeah. Persistency of being consistent. That's good. Yeah. No, I, I agree, man. You know, and something else I, I, I like to kind of just piggyback off, you know, just because my, my dad, man, he was, uh, he owned his own construction company, you know, for all of my life, you know what I mean? For the most part, um, you know, early on, you know, he street dude, you know, did his thing, you know, as far as that was concerned. But, you know, once we got out of that situation, you know, he successful, you know, within the, the construction, you know, field and, you know, prior before him, my grandfather, you know, the same thing. You know, so I, I remember, you know, on, on top of that roof, feeling like I was sweating like a slave. You know, I hate using that analogy, but like, right. man, you know, but looking back, you know, you now, you know, my me being an adult, me being a father and things of that nature, I see all of the, the good that entrepreneurship had brought my family and my, you know, I mean, just the generations and things of that nature prior to. But I also see where we could have done better. You know what I'm saying? I, I was able to learn from, you know, some of those mistakes that were made and things of that nature. Did you, you know, did you even, you know, capitalize on, on not to say capitalize, but capitalize on the mistakes that you've seen in the past to ensure kind of your, your success moving forward, even in that? Absolutely. I mean, one of the things was that like my grandfather was a one man band most of his life. Yeah. Yeah. And so him being a carpenter working on homes, he, he, he never was able to scale. Yeah. And so, that was a valuable lesson I learned just from watching him. And I, I told myself, hey, I don't want to be, I don't want to buy a job. Because really, that's what entrepreneurship yeah. is. You, you're that's buying good. a job. That's and good. So what I told myself was, is that 
I want to, I want to, I want to run a company. Yeah. In order to run a company, I have to know how to scale and I have to know how to work with people. So as I started to develop and become a, a, a much more savvier executive, as I like to call ourselves, I started right. to focus on building people because mm-hmm. building people, people run your business. Sure. And so, so, so the mistakes or the experience that I got from my grandfather is that I don't want to do, I don't want to be the single solepreneur forever because yeah. <clears throat> you literally work till you die. Yeah. And so yeah. That, that, so I did take that from him uh, indirectly. And again, a lot of this stuff didn't really manifest or register with me until I've gotten older and had more experience on this journey. Because, you know, when we first go into entrepreneurship, we're excited. I mean, Absolutely. we get excited setting up our LLC. Absolutely. <laughs> you know Absolutely. Because it's so foreign to us coming up in the Black community. Yeah. And then once you start making a little bit of money, you know, and, and that can be addicting. And so, yeah. but then we get tied to that job. And again, I just always want to focus and say, hey, I want to run a company. And so I started yeah. focusing on the things that it took to run a company. But that's what I took from that experience is that I didn't want to be a soul, solopreneur all my life. Yeah, no, no, that's that's dope. You know, my dad, man, um, I said, I don't know if we, you know, if I told you or, you know, if I mentioned it before, you know, but we have, a, we got like a few um, investment properties right now. We, we're at three. Right. And it, it's been a blessing, man. You know, we, we've learned a lot. I bumped my head a whole bunch, you know, in that, that first one. And, and, you know, the second one got better. Third one got even better. You know, now we're, you know, waiting for uh, to see if they accept the offer for, you know, for what will be our fourth one. Right. Congrats, but my congrats. dad, thank you, man. Appreciate that. You know, but, you know, my dad, man, he still sometimes he has that that old school mindset, the, the what you call it, the, the solopreneur. You know, yeah. what I'm saying? And, and, you know, he. I'll have him come with me to, you know, to look at, well, what are you expecting? What do you think, you know, from a cost standpoint, we're going to need to put into this and this, that, and the third, does it make sense? You know, and, you know, he's like, man, you know, he said, well, let's just go ahead and, you know, let's get some more tools, you know, and things of that nature built up, you know, so that we can just come in and knock it. Hey man, listen, you know, my knees hurt. Like I ain't trying to, you know, do too much. You know, the, that's where, you know, that mindset shift, you know, needs to take place. I'm telling him all the time, like, man, no, we, let's get it. Let's make the numbers make sense so we can contract this out. You know what I'm saying? I'm all for sweat equity and things of that nature, which we did some of that in the first couple, but I'm like, that ain't the, that's not the play. You know, that's not what we're, what we're working this hard to, to, to continue to grow the portfolio. We're not doing that to be the, 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 you know, the landlords and the contractors and, no, you, we, at some point we got to learn to to scale out and, and to grow. You know what I mean? So that's super important, man. And I, I think that we often probably due to some trust issues, you know what I'm saying? We have a fear of allowing other people to have pieces of the company to help you get to that next level. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, what, and I guess the question for me is what, at what point did you finally get to a space where you recognize it was time to scale out and, and, you know, where were you at from a business standpoint before, you know, you got to that space? No, great questions. Um, so a couple of things. One is, is that we often say we go into entrepreneurship for time freedom. Yeah. But we never have time as an entrepreneur because we're a solopreneur. And so I told myself, if I really want to be able to take a Tuesday off to go to Miami, or if I want to be able to go watch a movie on a random Wednesday in the middle, like I really have to create that time because yeah. I don't want to be like you say, the handyman, the property manager, the landlord, the yeah. this and the third. So as I started learning more just about business, and I think it was in a book, Thinking Grow Rich, where they talked about, you know, to grow a company, you build people. And so yeah. I started really focusing on building people because yes, there's always that trust factor, but yeah. how do you develop that trust factor? You build relationships. And so then I had to tell myself, Deshaun, we trust people with our lives and everything else. Think about Man. it. Do we really know the doctor we go to? That's a fact. Do we know the, the teachers that we send our kids to school with? That's a fact. Do we really trust the pilot? We seen yeah. the movie with Denzel. Do we so we we trust people with our lives and all of these other areas, but but in the areas where we can control a lot more, 
we have less trust in those people. Wow. Wow. Well, if we focus on building the relationship, the trust will come. Yeah. And so, so I think I got to a point in my life and I always say that I was, I had a little bit of a cheat code because my personal development came early in my entrepreneurship journey. Okay. I started off learning personal development. And so it was easier for me to pick up these things and translate them as I was going along where a lot of times people get jump into entrepreneurship and they bump their head a bunch of times. Yeah. And then they're yeah. like, how do I change this? And then they eventually get introduced to changing their mindset and becoming yeah. more uh, personally developed. And so, uh, but it's something you're always going to go through, you know, because here's the second part to that. As you grow, you have to hire new levels, meaning now you got to start hiring people where you may have to pay them six figures a year. Yeah. You got to hire people where you're paying eighty, ninety thousand dollars a year, whether it's your content uh, writers, whether it's your CFO of your company. So then you have to learn how to create different levels of trust with people because sure you're thing. trusting people literally to run your company while you go out and continue to just be great. So it's always an evolution of building that trust, but it really boils down to building relationships. And that's yeah. where it starts. And that's why that book, How to Win Friends and Influence People is so important. And it was one of the first books that I had an opportunity to read because you have to learn how to work with people. And one of the top 10 reasons why people fail in anything is they don't know how to work with people. Yeah, uh, that, that's a fact. And I actually, I talked to, um, I don't know if you know uh, Kenyatta Griggs. He, um, he, um, he does uh, hip hop motivation. He and Dane Dash, he was like originally like Dane's barber, I think originally. And, you know, they, he, they've grown, you know, just from a business standpoint together and whatnot. But I had a conversation, you know, had the pleasure of talking to him one time. And, and we were talking about relationships, you know, and just the importance of being good to people, you know, and, and you know, that in turn, you know, uh, attracting good people, you know what I mean? And, and so I agree with that, man. That, that's, a, that's a key in itself. Um, you know, you were talking about, you know, the, the, the book that you were reading. How, what pushed you to write The Credit King? Because now you got individuals doing just like, you know, what that book did for you, your book is doing for others now. Like what pushed you to, to jump into that arena, like that route? Yeah, so I had a good friend, uh, Tavon Jackson. He uh, owns a publishing company, uh, Jackson Publishing. I know and exactly. Yep, yeah, I know what you're talking about. This was around 2015. Okay. And he was like, man, you should write a book. I'm like, man, I don't know what to write about. <laughs> I was like, my yeah. life isn't that interesting. And so he was like, man, just write about what you know. Make it yeah. about credit. And I was like, man, I don't want to do like a, like it's a million books on credit. What's going to separate yeah. mine? And then I sat and thought, I sat with that for a minute. I was like, you know what? Let me make it more like a manual. Yeah. Not where you have to just really go through. But then I also wanted to have things in there that, some other credit books didn't have. So I talked about understanding what credit scores are, what's a FICO, understanding the difference with good credit and bad credit with interest rates. I put a glossary in here. I put the credit myth. So I put different things in there that wasn't necessarily in most credit books. Sure. <clears throat> and, 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 and But then here's the second part, Deshaun, that I really put a lot of emphasis on. I wanted to have the book written and for somebody to be able to read it as low as from an eighth grade level. That's, that's so okay. Most people comprehend at an eighth grade level. I don't care what level of degree of schooling that you have. And so, because here's the second part, most people in the black community, they get intimidated when it's talk finance. And yeah. if you're using big jargons and industry verbiage, that's yeah. going to turn people off. And yeah. so that really was my secret sauce of saying, hey, I want to write this book from a perspective that if you pick it up, you're not intimidated. I wanted yeah. to make the cover thin. I want to make the book, you know, slender. And I've had people say, man, I've read this book from a flight from East Coast to West Coast and they've been able to finish it. And so I literally had no expectation of the book. I just did it. And yeah. I'm so, I'm always in amazement that the book sells like crazy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And when I'm checking the reports or, you know, I'm in a airport and somebody's like hey it's the will the credit king and like yeah. like it, it's, it's just like so so dope but here's the here's the 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 grander uh feeling of that i have the book copywritten so now that's intellectual property 
This is something I can pass to my son. That's a fact. That's, That's the most fact. powerful part because when you write a book, you get royalties from that. So yeah. now my son will make money off that book as long as that book is out there in rotation. Like that's the most rewarding and gratifying thing that I'm creating a legacy that will outlive me. This is why yeah. we know who the Hiltons are. This is why yeah. we know who the Hines family is or whatever major name. And so I wanna do what I can do to ensure people know who the round trees are. And that's that right. book was a major piece in me kind of planning and cementing that first piece of my legacy along with everything else that I'm currently working on. So yeah, uh, yeah man, that, but that book was important. And then lastly, that's my business card. But see, think about it. When you go somewhere, especially somewhere important, you give somebody a business card, what's the likelihood of them keeping up with that business card? Yeah, yeah. They're not throwing a book away. Sure thing, sure thing, sure thing. Sure thing. So anytime I'm in the airport, I always keep a couple books on me. So if I see someone, I've, you know, I've bumped into athletes, rappers, entertainers, movie producers. First thing I'm doing is, hey, my name is Will Roundtree. I just want to give you a copy of my book. And they're not going to throw it away. Yeah. yeah. They're not crack it open. I remember I, uh, I had a picture that someone sent me uh, that Floyd Mayweather had my books in his bedroom on his nightstand. So I was just like, like that type of stuff is powerful because I know people don't throw books away. And so right. my book is my business card. And that's why I tell every entrepreneur, write a book. I don't care if it's 10 pages or 10,000 pages, but write yeah. a book. I think I actually, you probably don't remember this. I, I reached out to you uh, maybe probably a couple of years now asking you um, who, I think I asked you who you, you know, who you used, you know, to, to publish and things of that nature. And you sent me, you know, you sent me your guy. So, oh, I, so I have, yeah, I got his information still tucked away. You know, I'm not quite ready yet, but you know, so yeah, I appreciate it. that's something else too, man. You, you always been genuine, you know, too, in, in that regard, man, of, of sharing that information. So just, yeah, no, that, that's awesome. And that's genius too, to, to take that book around. That's the new business card, man. That, that's the genius. Um, yeah. Like, so, you know, Black Vest at its core, man, as I say, you know, it's, it's you know, financial literacy. Um, you know, we, we really encourage, you know, individuals to, 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 to look into just the self-development, you know, both on, you know, just from business to personal. Um, you know, how important is it, you know, to young entrepreneurs to ensure their financial literacy is correct? You know, because as we said, pandemic birthed a lot of, you know, uh, Instagram gurus and things of that nature, right? How important is it to ensure that your financial literacy is intact before you jump out here trying to be everything to everybody from a business standpoint? I mean, the financial literacy piece is important, one, just from a credibility standpoint. I mean, if, you, if you're if wanting to go out there and, and I'm all for everybody contributing some kind of way when it comes to content, but make yeah. sure that it's credible because I've yeah. seen a lot of people get jammed up because they've gotten misinformation or they're getting bits and pieces or they're jumping out there prematurely because they're trying to create a name for themselves. Sure. And I often tell people, I was doing this for six years before anybody knew who I was. I was doing this for six years before I even made a dime because it was never about the money. I genuinely said, hey, this information helped me. Let me tell you how we can help you. Yep. And it wasn't about, it wasn't a transactional you know, uh, 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 feet. It was more, I genuinely want to give you some information that can, that can assist you. Yeah. And in return, if you feel that it was valuable or informational for you, you know, you can come do business with us. Once I actually did start an actual uh, company. And so it's vitally important that people get that financial literacy before they jump out there. But then I think the first part of your question or that I can piggyback onto that why is financial literacy even important for our youth? You don't want to be the 50 year old saying, I should have, could have, I would have. It's a fact. You see what I'm saying? Like, I see it all the time. And, 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 and people always say, hey, Will is a nice guy, but I will correct somebody in a minute from yeah. a standpoint of like, I don't deal with the people who say, oh, I, I used to do this and this is how it is. No, that's not true. Like I, I will correct you when you are spewing out misinformation, especially within my circle or if, if it's in a, an intimate setting where we're sitting with people 
Or, you know, you again, going back to that shoulda, coulda, woulda, imagine being able to fix your credit or just learn about the power of credit in your 20s and 30s. But then you get to your 40s and 50s and you got to go find a new job in a space where they look at your credit. Yeah. Imagine how detrimental that could be to your family that now you can't prosper into a new career because your credit isn't in place. Yeah. Or, or we're seeing rents almost increase by 40 to 50 percent where you can potentially go buy a house and your mortgage is cheaper than the rent. But because you didn't take the time to fix your credit three years ago, you're stuck in a, in a, in a position where the rents are rising. Yeah. So it's just so yeah. many different reasons. And I mean, we could have a show literally just about that and why financial literacy is so important. But those two examples are more real life because people are witnessing it now. We're getting people reaching out to us who are almost operating out of desperation, Deshaun, because their rent is increased or they got an evicted right. or they need to go buy a new car or their, right. their, their, their funds are running low and they need to figure something out, but they're stuck in this financial purgatory all because they didn't take action three years yep. ago. Yep. And so, yep. yeah, we, we, and I often say we got to do better. We have to, yep. we got to do better. Absolutely. And, and that's, you know, that's a lot of man, my, my thought process, you know, I'm not even going to sit here in front and act like, you know, the, the, the thought and idea of, you know, being able to make money in, you know, this industry, this and the third wasn't, didn't cross my mind. Right. Cause I'd be lying. You know what I mean? But, you know, if I, I find I had gotten to a space, you know, just mentally of I'm wanting to be what I wish I had 12, 13 years ago. You know what I'm saying? I'm wanting to, to provide as easy as possible access to information that I didn't have or didn't know how to go about, you know, receiving, you know, years ago. Right. You know, and it, it's one of those things because, you know, financial literacy it's, it's, it goes beyond just your personal, you know, because as you say, you know, you got individuals who's wanting to jump out here. And even again, even my family that I've seen, you know, they've had extreme success. You know, the, they got the, the business was flowing, this and the third, but a lack of financial literacy calls for issues and IRS situations years, years after you even last ran, you know, saying a transaction from the business standpoint. It's extremely important, extremely important. And you, you, you know, to the people listening, you got the Will Roundtrees, you know what I'm saying? You got the, you know, Deshaun's and things of that nature. Utilize the information that that is out there. You know, a lot of a lot of Will's information is out there on YouTube. You know, he give a lot, he gives there's a ton of free game, like for transparency. Will played a vital part in my transition, you know, in, in my turnaround. There's plenty of free information out there. We just have to do our due diligence and just going out there. Everybody got a phone in their hand now, right? The information is literally at the palm of your hand. You know what I mean? So um, I, I wanted to, to ask you a question too, right? So I see you out here, man. You, 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 getting, uh, you getting it in, in in regards to your fitness journey too. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Um, you know, and that, that's something that has always played, you know, close to my heart, you know, as well. Uh, you know, and it's something I want to, continue to encourage our people, you know, to really look into, you know, really to search into because the, the saying the health is wealth, it's, it's a legit thing, right? So how has, you know, how has that, that physical transformation and, you know, you being more focused on your health, how has that, you know, changed your business perspective? Definitely. Well, I'll tell you what made me make, finally get serious about it. Uh -huh. uh, I saw a video of myself. <laughs> Oh. Like, is this what people is looking <laughs> that will motivate you very quickly <laughs> that's a fact that's a fact it humble you quick man yeah. real quick i'm like i can't even watch some of my old videos and so i said i have to get serious about this and so i said i can't be out here telling people to invest in their financial literacy if i'm not going to invest in my health so yeah. i went and hired a personal trainer uh got a nutritionist and really just started learning that just like there's a science to success in making money, there's a science to your health. And yeah. so I really took it serious, man. And, and, and here's why. See, a lot of times when we go into entrepreneurship or when we start businesses, we will sacrifice our health to make millions of dollars. That's a fact. 
But then here's the flip side to that. If you hurt yourself or you get an ailment, you will have to spend every dollar to fix your health because yeah. you don't want, you don't want to you don't want to die. You know what I'm saying? And so I said I had to tell myself, find that balance, make the time. If you got to get up an extra hour early, if you got to stay up an extra hour late, but do what you have to do. Make better food decisions. You know, it's OK to have, you know, uh, 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 you know, and, and indulge a little bit, but do it in moderation. And so I had to learn these things. And then it becomes a lifestyle, just like the financial gain is a lifestyle. Your health is a financial lifestyle. And, and, and it really is. It gives you a different level of focus. You know, when you're in a public, people judge you based on how you look. It's, you know, like we just got to be brutally honest. And so yeah. it even helps you with your confidence when you're speaking with people. It, like it, There's so many different benefits. I mean, when when I'm traveling, I want a very rigorous schedule. You know, I may have a, a, a red eye leaving Las Vegas, flying to the East Coast, get there at noon the next day. And then I don't speak until five o'clock. And so you have to have energy and make sure that you got the energy. So when you're on that stage at five o'clock, because you've been up since 11 p.m. the night before, that you can go out there and perform. That's and so right. being able to, 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 to have that energy. So there's so many uh, good positive effects when you're eating differently. You, you can think more with clarity. You make better decisions. Like, it, it, like your health truly is wealth. And I, I think we've just made it a hashtag until you actually are a part of the lifestyle of really yeah. wanting to change that. And you really do truly see the benefits of it, man. Yeah, no, that, that, that's perfect. And, and it's truth. You know, it, it's one of those things where, you know, you'd be surprised that once you start to, like you said, once you start to, to get yourself together, you know, physically and stuff, that, that confidence, you know, that confidence starts to go up. You'd be surprised how that changes, you know, just your, your business performance in itself. Yeah. You know, um, I said, man, I, I joke about it all the time. You know, I was an athlete and stuff in high school and, and through college, you know, and then I got married and had the kids and started relaxing. <laughs> and like you, bro, like I, I was looking back at some of the uh, some of the, the old videos and stuff that, you know, we did from even just the last year, year and a half. Right. Like, man, I, I, you know, I, I'm already out and lost my ball now. So I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm that guy. They turned into that guy. Like. But yeah. it, it is a thing, man. You know, it, it really comes down to, you know, making everything a priority. You know, you, you got to you gotta yeah. develop yourself internally and externally in order yeah. for you to want to grow. So, man, listen, I, I said I, I want to I'm a man of my word. I won't, you know, won't hold you too long. man. I, I definitely could, could go on, you know, longer. Um, you know, I'll, I'll end with this, you know, just being the final question. Um, and again, I want to say thank you, you know, to, to you and, and shout out to, um, to Ron as well, man, for, you know, putting everything, lining everything up as well. Um, you know, I, I, I will make sure as far as I'm concerned, you know, this won't be the last conversation we have for sure, man. So, uh, you know, God willing, you know, longest time permits, man, we'll, we'll definitely do this again, but, um, I want to end on this. What does financial literacy mean to Will Roundtree? Man. Financial literacy is it's life changing, man. I mean, it's life or death for our c culture, our community. I mean, yeah. like if you don't know just the basics of financial literacy, we are literally walking our next generation into a burning building. Yeah. Because imagine if there was no internet, Deshaun. And what we've been able to learn over the past, let's just say, 15 years about financial literacy, if we hadn't had access to that information, where would we be? Yeah. Because our parents didn't know this. We're yeah. teaching our parents about credit. We're teaching our parents about budgeting. We're teaching our parents about tax. Like, so financial literacy, it's life or death for us. It's no longer a necessity. I mean, yeah. excuse me, it's no longer a luxury. Like when, when I tell people, Pay for credit monitoring if you have to, just like you pay for cable. Like mm -hmm. it's, a, it's mandatory that we know what our digital scorecard is. And that's our, excuse me, our digital report card. And that is, or excuse me, our financial report card. And that's our credit score. Think about it. All we have to do is keep that credit score intact. And you can go out there and create whatever it is you want. 
Yeah. I can go start multiple businesses. I can go invest in as many pieces of real estate as I want. I can uh, uh, go and start businesses and create jobs for people all off of understanding how powerful my credit is. So yeah. financial literacy for me is life or death. And that's why I'm so serious and passionate about it, man. There you have it. Man, Mr. Will Roundtree, I appreciate you, bro, again. Uh, uh, definitely yeah. an honor to, to have this conversation with you, man. And um, I, I hope that everybody was able to, to take something away. Um, there's definitely plenty of jewels in this. You know, um, as always, don't forget to like, share, give this information, put this information out, share it with a friend. You know who I am? Your man, Deshaun Wolf Williams. Black Vest. Appreciate you. Peace. Peace.